Rose. Hey, baby. Uh, Where I'm at. Uh, man. Oh, we, man. We know you're smoking good. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I'm doing it. Man, you was out there. You was out everybody, there. Everybody, everybody who tuned in, I want to apologize for the day I was cutting the yard. <laughs> I'm stop cutting the yard to kick it with my niggas and smoke what you know what I'm saying? You, you know what's funny? Everyone was jealous of the tractor, man. I was like, what? He got a tractor out there? I'm like, yeah, my boy got real estate, man. He got land. Yeah, exhibit was Is he on the tractor? <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, I'm on the tractor, like you said in that record. You say uh, a lot of motherfuckers say money don't grow on grass, don't grow on trees, but Shit, that's what it said, baby. We need that grass. We need that green. We need them acres. That's right, man. Next time I come out that way, man, I want to pull up, man. I got to see that in person, man. That place looks nuts. Man, I took my time, man. You know, we grind slow. You know what I'm saying? Be real. I've been watching you for nigga 30 years, feel like, nigga. And you still a young nigga getting money, still swerving. You know what I'm saying? Riding big, burner. You already know burner. You know when I see burner, my nigga, I look at burner like a young nigga in the game, and take that as a compliment. Take that as a compliment, nigga, because you move smooth. You know what I'm saying? You a player with it. It ain't about business, and that's the good thing about this music. Music, we put the music first. Music come first. You know what I'm saying? In this project, like you know, when y'all niggas sent the record to me, I look at it like this project. You know the music first, and then it's for the smokers. I feel like if you take pride in really being a smoker, this is something you gotta have because this is a this is a a, a a combination of really the biggest smokers in the game. And for all the real niggas who smoke and got big smoke, we fuck with y'all too. But this is what it's about. And same way when other niggas put their shit together, I'm gonna go get it just to smoke to it. You know what I'm saying? Just that's to, what just this to is. Ride the vibe and smoke to it. Yeah, this the culture. It's for the culture. It's bigger than us. And, and I gotta tell you, you know, as as someone who's been following your career too, man, you know, I, I watched I watched how you fucking maneuvered and like your bar work just kept getting better and better as it went along. Just like one of my favorite MCs, man. And I always was like, you know, if they always asked me like low key, like, yeah, who would you tr do tracks with? And I'd have a, a short list. And uh, you was always on that list, my dude. Cause like, you know, you hit the pocket like nobody else. You know what I'm saying? So when, when, um, when this went down and I, and I know we did something a while back on some, yeah, but yeah. when we did this, it just made so much sense because, you know, when Bert and I were in the studio, we were talking about this earlier, we were hearing tracks and, and hearing who could be on these tracks. And when we hit hit that joint candy, we're like, you know, Bert was like, yo, man, Rick Ross would sound hard on this. And I'm like, body it. he body it. You got it. You got, you got it. that quick, quick, and fast, in a hurry. Yeah. Flames. Flame bars right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and I expected no less because I know how you do it, man. You know, you if I think I think your flow influenced a lot of people. And e even though they might not admit it, you know, they was they was checking, you know, how your your style was running. You know what I'm saying? So like right, right. I, I know you influenced a lot of cats out there and, and to like get on one where you're in that pocket, man, it it, it was an honor getting down with you, my dude. You know what else is tight too, though, B? So I met Rose probably like, I want to say like 10 years ago, maybe like 10, 9 to 11 years ago when I was running yeah. Spencer. It was NFL. over a decade. And that's when I was first like really transitioning to fuck with the rap, but I was you know, I was running that spot, right? And to be able to run into you again, and all this whole time while I've been making music, everyone's like, you got to get with Rose. You got to get, I see it. Oh, <laughs> boss, I see it. And my guys always told me, like, look, you got to get with Rose. And I said, man, it will happen naturally, right? But the weed brought us together again. Because when Alex hit me and said, I'm dropping off some weed on behalf of Be Real, what are you doing? Um, I said, so you about to really pull up on Rose? He said, yeah. I said, man, Alex, sometimes you get some shit. He's like, nah, for real, for real. I said, okay, cool. He picked me up in the Wraith, and we pulled up and just, boom, connected. And the music happened naturally. And that's what's so dope because... When I first met you, Rose, I wanted to holler at you about music, but I was like, I gotta level up first. 
You know what I mean? I got a lot of work to do. So it's tight that you were able to see my growth, but through this whole time that we reconnected and got everything where it needed to be. You know what I mean? I seen it. I seen it, homie. You know what I'm saying? It was many, many years ago. We ran into you. I had the little homie Spiff with me, all us. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, you know, um, you know, our, our smoke culture is special. You know, it's niggas who bring shit to the game and it's niggas who just come to the table to take from the game. Mm -hmm. And we all got to find a way to bring something to the game. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, I run across niggas who got, you know, who smoke real good all the time, but I love to bond with players and niggas I know could get paper around the motherfucking world. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we on this shit right now. Niggas is players. Niggas been smoking big, running the niggas they smoke big. Niggas got gas for you. And that's what it's about. When my homies come through Miami, that's why I wanted it to be Collins Ave, because I want a nigga to know when you come through Miami, it ain't just about no paper. It's about us being players and representing the culture. You know what I'm saying? If it's cookies, if it's green thumb, nigga, it's family, nigga. That's the brand. And we let niggas know we standing behind it. And we putting the music behind it as well. So if you fuck with us on some music shit, you know you could smoke with us. And yeah. that's what we want niggas to know. We, we, you know, and, and that's what I wanted to do. I done been around the world 60 times. And I'm only going to smoke with the best. And I said, yo, if there's some niggas I'm going to fuck with. And when I'm, I'm talking about when I get to Cali, shout out to my partner Snoop. My nigga done came, you know, we done did it big hella times. But I was like, yo. I, I gotta fuck with this nigga be real. I gotta fuck with this nigga burner. It's that time now. You know what I mean? And for everybody that's in the South, niggas wanna smoke Cali. Cause we all gotta respect it. I don't know if it's the hills, I don't know if it's the air in Cali. It might be the moisture, nigga. It might be that Malibu beach. I don't know what it is, but it's different. <laughs> it's a different game. And real yeah. players accept it. You know what I'm saying? And we make sure we stay connected. And that's yeah. what this about, for niggas checking in with us, smoking with us, get the album, ride with us so you know niggas that much better. And you know, when you link up with them, you know how we smoking. And that's what, it, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about cookies, it's about green thumb. Shout out to the little homie Al, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the dope thing is too, is you could really, you could really start boasting on fools because a lot of cats are just taking their name and putting on anything. You got real genetics. Pink Rose is a real oh, yeah. genetic. Lemon you know what? Real it's like it's like I don't even know how to take it, but they got the fake pink rose packs already. I'm gonna tell you how you take it though. That's, That's how you it. take it. It's like, you're, do you're we leader. take it as a compliment? Cause yeah. niggas want to be down, and yeah. I let yeah. everybody know. Fuck with cookies. Fuck with green thumb. Be down. Stay down. Yeah, yeah. if you ain't That's getting it from the store, it ain't real. Bottom ain't line. Real. Oh, it ain't real. Cause this niggas out here in the south. I'm like, yo. Hey, Nigga, you, you know, one of my niggas just kept it real, like Rose. You know, niggas want to fuck with y'all niggas, and I'm like, yo, but you know, give us a second, and you gonna be able to fuck with us the right way. Don't let niggas tarnish our legacy with the fake green thumb packs, the fake be real, because y'all see my nigga logo on it. Y'all niggas gotta really make sure y'all checking in and getting the right thing, cause that fake shit ain't gonna represent what we doing on this side. That's real shit, and 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 real talk though. I'll say this, you know, when when they faking your your packs and your packaging and all that shit, that means you doing it right. Cause if 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 you were you, you know putting out something that motherfuckers weren't fucking with with the booth, you don't see them ever copying nah. bags of that bullshit. But when they on it, you know that means you doing it right. And I'll tell you what, wow. that Rose and that Collins Ave is that fucking flame. You know what I'm saying? Collins Ave is blowing. Uh, we all vibed out, man. Come on, man. We all vibed out. We all vibed out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The call for dab is blowing. And the tight thing, too, Rose, is we'll let these ones become staples. We're going to put them all across 14 different markets, and we're going to start doing some breeding. So we'll take pink rose and cross it with London pound cake. That's going to be about a year process. But like you said, we played a long game. We ain't going nowhere. We, we already in it, right? So that's the thing about – B will tell you once the breeding starts happening, that's how okay. we just stand. It's just like dropping a new album. It takes time to do it, but we gonna do it. That, that's that's a great great analogy. Dropping a new strain is just like dropping a new album. You know what I'm saying? If it's if it's that shit, it's gonna slap people in the fucking face, and they ain't gonna know what to do when they ain't got it. 
Hey, 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 nine months, we're going to have pink pound cake on that bitch ass. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> baby. Oh, hey, look, look, look. And I'm going to tell you, let's do something that we can involve the globe in. Let's put yeah. us, in, not saying this the title of it, but this is just an idea of it's the Smoke Olympics, right? Oh, yeah. Let's find one of the biggest smokers in, in the UK, one of the biggest smokers out of Australia. Let's get some of the biggest niggas in front in Africa. And let's let's let them niggas put a verse on it. And we put together a Smoke Olympics album. And oh, yeah. it's all, you know what I'm saying? And, and let's fuck with some producers. And let's make sure niggas understand it ain't just about us making paper, but you gotta be a part of the family. If you make the beat, you gotta be a part of the family. You know That's what I'm right. saying? Because it's all about a zone we in. And like like the packaging says it's about the vibes. Yeah, yeah. Vibes. Shit, the best. Vibes, vibes is everything, man. That's what's you can't vibe with a motherfucker, it, it ain't gonna happen. Hey man, you know, I propose at, at some point the three of us make an album. Let's Ooh. go. Come on. Let's let's Ooh. go. Ooh, we come let's on. do it. <laughs> That shit, we gonna, we gonna wreck and ball motherfuckers with that shit right there, boy. And, and once again, we just let niggas know, you know, it's about the culture. We always put the music first, and then it's about the smokers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I'm, I'm the, at this table we sitting at, I'm the newest motherfucker sitting at this table. That's why I make sure I'm keep saying this just for everybody watching this. Rose self-made, real money. We could go smoke anything. This what we choose. You see what I got on? Because Period. I'm you really it, blowing, nigga. I cut my grass today, 200 acres. And I said, I'm going to go shower up and then I'm blowing cookies. And I'm going to sip some of that goddamn rosé or some of that bamboo. I'm going to get on the motherfucking three-way chat for the first time with my smoking partners. Yes, sir. And for everybody that that's watching, too, man. we smoking that's together. You know right. what I'm saying? Bamboo for the, for the house, man, for sure. Man, that's too easy. And this is something we got to do at least every 30 days just for the club. We got to create a club where niggas who smoke what we smoke. That's right. In. Same way y'all zip me that code. That was some fly shit, B. That's How you thing. shot that's that? that you should be able to shoot that just to certain motherfuckers who smoking, got their vibes. You know what I'm saying? They I'm toast with us like players. You know what I'm saying? They got to be on that green thumb, that pink rosé, that cookie shit, or you can't even get in the code. I'm with that. That's like the VIP club code right there. That's what it you get is. The pack signal from Be Real. You know what time it is. You know what I'm saying. And if it ain't from Be Real, it if it ain't from the homie. And you know anything coming from my side is co-signed by my family. You know what I mean. And so that's what it's about. I just want to smoke the finest. I done been everywhere. Everybody done brought me garbage bags like it was Halloween. Like Santa was coming down the chimneys. And I thank him for that. But guess what? My homies had the best. And that's all I want to do. I want to wear the fly sneakers. I want to ride Rolls Royce. And I want to smoke motherfucking cookie and green thumb. Be real. Shout out to my little homie Al. Man, you know what the dope thing to do is. out there with that fake packaging. We ain't hating <laughs> on y'all. We ain't yeah, hating on y'all. Yeah, we know what y'all trying to get to. Yeah. And we're going to make it possible for y'all in this pandemic. We smoking good for y'all. And we know a lot of y'all niggas smoking mid-grade in this pandemic, but we gonna get through this and you gonna be able to get back to the number one. Man, That's look, right. that when Peak Rose dropped in uh, in Michigan, it went crazy, man. And the next market I believe it's gonna drop in soon is Maryland. So, you know, we said we sprinkling this around the globe real quick, man. You know, nationwide, baby. Nationwide. They, and, like they, we, they, and like we titled the record, Candy. This shit, it gets no sweeter than this. That's real when shit. When I heard the title, I said, oh man, I know exactly what we on. That's why when you hear me popping my shit on the record, it's basically just painting a vision for letting motherfuckers know we down in the South. That's why this is an important element to this, this three-headed monster. We down in the South right here. We from yeah. everything Texas down, right from Atlanta all the way to Miami. Yeah. Number one, this is the best you gonna get and you fucking with it. And we want to see y'all smoking, enjoying life. You remember when we sent the record, I sent them Vision first. And then we yeah. did Candy that night. I said, oh, I'm about to send them Candy. And the next day I followed up. I said, yo, if you haven't knocked out the other one, you said, I already knocked it out. And I didn't know which one you was talking about. I told B, I hope he slid on Candy. 
And you send it, we was like, oh, we got it. Oh, Candy, it's a wrap. That motherfucker riding, bro. Slapped it. Killing on Apple Music and Spotify right now, too. Hey, hey, he can he cannonballed on the deep side of the pool and splashed. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm a fat nigga and I do it too, baby. We gotta do us the cookie pool party. And we got the biggest pool in the United States of America. It's right out back. That's Manny, bro. That's that's a flex, bro. That's a pure bar. That's a bar right there. You know what I'm saying? And we only doing it, like I said, if you ain't got that cookie zip code whatever we gonna title that little shit be real just sent me the summons the summons, wow. the summons. that's something you want to partake in you've been summoned to the smoke room oh. the burn and the doctor what the oh. fuck? <laughs> that's hard that's hard <laughs> you know what i want to do too I know niggas, it's niggas all around the world who watching us and know, you know, we smoking the best and them niggas getting paper. Let's take us three minutes out and let's pay homage to some niggas that inspired us. Let's yeah. show the young niggas that's watching us. It's cool to, to pay homage to the big homies in the same way we want to. I want to take time out and just salute um, the homie Luke, Luke Records, independent. He was manufacturing his own CDs in the back of his own club. That meant a lot, you know what I'm saying? Only motherfuckers I knew at one time was doing that was him, Russell Simmons, Poison Clan, Trick Daddy. You know, that was a, a important bridge because Miami went from bitches twerking, like all these hoes putting their hands on the wall, yes. clapping that ass, trying to get that $50 cash out. Bitch, I ain't sending it. <laughs> I got up watching that for free. We got that for free. I ain't cash apping you to shake that asshole. If you fucking with a player, I'm gonna smoke one while you shake that ass, bitch. So I want to say something to uh, Jay Prince for rap a lot. I always wanted to be a boss. I always wanted to be a CEO. Like I said, Luke, I want to say Big Suge Knight. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember I was watching something as a young nigga and they said homie was worth 300 million. I said, off a record label, 300 million? Crazy. God damn. So them the three niggas I want to salute one time. You know what I'm saying? I pay homage to a lot of niggas, but Luke, uh, Jay Prince, what he did with the Ghetto Boys. I love that Mind Playing Tricks on me. That shit touched me. I was in the seventh grade when Mind Playing Tricks came. Oh, yeah. I wish I had some cookies to smoke to that back then. Yeah, man. Ooh. If it yeah, only existed back then, hell yeah. Yeah, I got to hear your three before I say my three, because I want to know who inspired you, because you come from legendary, pure legendary status already, so. It, it shit, in terms of, of being an artist, man, it, it, it was always, you know, like, uh, cats like KRS-One, and, you know, one, because realistically, my dude would, would, go out there with the sound system or not like let you know because we as artists have all encountered this at some point where we're, we're trying to do a show and the sound is fucked up or something blows out and we all you know yell at the sound man <laughs> yo sound man get this yo, shit DJ, motherfucker. Right? and in krs1 was the type of dude to throw the mic to the floor and just rock it without any music just go you know, with the lyrics and, and start flipping out and he would still have the club like totally fucking lit at, at that time. And, 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 um, you know, when he was coming up and, and, you know, motherfuckers was excited about him. Uh, you know, that taught me a lot, you know, to, 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 to have stage control, to have mic control. And, and I learned a lot directly from that dude, like how to, how to do the live show, you know, you know, in terms of hip hop, how to captivate a crowd and that be is on the money. That yeah. is hip hop. And be on the like money in terms of that's East Coast KRS one is not regular. That's uncut word play. And for yeah. you to be the nigga, the less West Coast legend you are, that makes so much sense, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd watch him rock shows with no with no track in the background. He's just rocking, and I said, "Okay, that's that's the direction right there." So, in, in terms of being an artist uh, and a live performer and just overall MC, he was one of the big influences. 
And in terms of, of business, you know, he, he came after us, but my man, Jay-Z, I mean, if you look what he did in terms of like being one of the first to have his, to own his own masters and, and like, you know, every move that, that my dude made is, has been like steps higher. I, you know, I respect the shit out of my dude and his bar work is incredible. Legendary. Legendary Without bar work. Without Without doubt. Doubt. No games. Without one, a doubt. Of, one of the coldest in the motherfucking game and, and I got and I got it and I got a big up Diddy man, Diddy you know, without a doubt. A, a, as a businessman and, and a mogul, to see how he's constantly reinventing himself in in big big and relevant and doing relevant things. You know, I, I was always inspired by that cat. You know what I'm saying? Um, although our grind is very different, always inspired by that dude. His energy is always up, always positive. You know, um, it, it's it's a cool thing to see him constantly getting it, man. So yeah, those those three right there. Man, I'm gonna have to take it to the bay for my three. Um, he's the first person I'd have to say is E40 for laying down that independent uh, blueprint. You know, gave all of us in the Bay Area some hope when it came to that independent grind, putting out that music out the trunk. Just man whole other like different style like being from the bay it's hard to get heard it's not easy you know it's it's just a little rougher to be heard coming out that bay area so shout out to e40 for laying the independent ground uh, you know blueprint for 40 us Fonzarelli. 40 really led the way for us man be legit yeah man e40 be legit be legit was like my big bro too so shout out to be legit um you know he's a little crazy right now i might get a little uh slack for saying this but you know <laughs> JT the bigger figure, man. When I was growing up in San Francisco, California, he was out the trunk with it, putting the city on the map, going crazy with San Quentin and GLP and all that. He's, he's in a weird place right now going crazy, but hey, Fig, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You, you taught me that every person you meet could be a, a, a potential transaction. That's the maniest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's real that Every person you meet could be a potential transaction. I'm like, damn, that's, that's, that's a cold real line. As fuck. That's a cold motherfucking line. Bottom line, cold line, and I say the last person is probably Mac Dre because you know rest he was game, rest in peace to Mac Dre. He was gaming a lot of people up too in the Bay Area and telling them a dope MC can make any beat dope. It don't matter. Like you can send a beat and it ain't your style, but shit, if you dope, make it your style. You you are you are what's gonna make that beat dope. So he just taught me just you know just to play with that wordplay a little bit on different beats. You know not to always be stuck in my comfort zone. You know what I mean? So. Got to give it up to that boy, Mac Dre. Rest in peace to the Mac Dre, man. That's trill shit right there, though, because, you know, I, I've, you know, we've all heard it, like, as, as, as being artists, and, and, but also fans of other artists, we've heard some dynamic MCs take some simplistic-ass beats and take them to another level. You know what I mean? Just because of the type of style they flipped on it, the, ver the word play they flipped on it, you know what I'm saying? That's that's what makes a cold MC. You could take a shitty beat and make it better. You know and what I'm just, saying? And just touching on that, that was a conversation I was having with Jay-Z and Jay-Z. He told me the way he listened to beats is not for the beat that's dope, but for the beat that he can make work. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, one of those perfect examples was Big Pimpin'. Hmm. Maybe Big Pimpin may have naturally not been a track that he would have just off if he was sitting in a studio by himself, maybe fuck with, but he yeah. made it go to the next level and that crossed over in the South. Like, you know what I'm saying? Man, yeah. Big Pimpin was huge for, for, for that vibe too. I mean, when you think about Jay-Z, it's one of the first records that pops in your head. Like when my generation coming up, that beat, the, his verse, like, that's crazy. That's dope to hear. But I think that's what makes some of the best joints is that when you go like outside of yourself, you know, maybe that's not necessarily the style of shit that you might normally fuck with, like 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 you said, right? But sometimes those joints be the special ones, those be the cold ones. Cause I mean, I remember when that one came out, that was a special joint. I mean, motherfuckers fucked with that. It mean from the south to the southwest, that shit was getting run. Big you know, play. It, Big it, play. It, it, that shit was getting mad run. That was next level. Yeah. 
Hey, I'll tell you what though, Rick, you was on my checklist of MCs to get on a track with for real for a long time, dog. That mean a lot, my nigga. That's that's real shit. That mean a lot, baby. And we gonna keep working. Oh yeah, this is smoking, and we gonna keep working. Man, when you when you come back to Cali, bro, the the studio we bad man. Look, we got abundance of weed. When it's me and B, I'm talking about a plethora. I'm talking about 30, 40 different bags on the table. They bring the they bring the little tray with the gourmet meals in with the little soft pepper with the little knife and fork. We over there eating big boss meals in the studio, blowing big. You gonna love it, bro. It's a wrap. We vibing in there. Oh, oh man, he, and that's he, what we need, he, baby. And that's what we need. We gonna just keep stacking the the uh, records. We gonna keep smoking the best. We gonna film it. Make sure we film it. All us when we get together. So we we drop the. When we put our album out, we're going to drop the, the, the documentary as well. It's going to be damn near like a movie just for the hustlers, just for we're going to give these niggas a visual of, of just hustling 24-7. And if you want to fuck with this smoke, we're going to give you the blueprint of how you take it to that next level. Hey, on another note, too, when it comes to being a, a CEO and, and owning a label, Bro, everybody. Let's give, them, let's give them three things. Burn the star with your three things from a CEO's perspective. Give it to them for the young right, niggas cool. who so, uh, smoke big and live big. So, first of all, I'm going to start with complimenting the way you get down because when we watch the way that any artist on Maybach rolls out, you guys all change your emojis or what do you call it? The, um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The avatar. Yes, the avatar, the Abby. Everybody's pushing Meek when Meek drops. Everyone's pushing Wale when Wale drop. Everyone's pushing you when you drop. You brought everyone up in the same way, right? And we had a, I had a uh, talk with a couple of my homies, like, because he's comfortable where he's at. He ain't worried about competing no, with nobody. You don't see that a lot. A lot of other artists that own labels, they get a little trippy sometimes, right? So I wanted to salute you on being a real, a real boss and bringing up everyone around you in the proper way. You know what I mean? Like, you always bigged up all your artists, and people really know that. I know that. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just dope, bro, for real. You know, but when it when it comes, to my perspective, uh, when it comes to being, being a CEO and running the label, man, first thing first, you got to be hands on, bro. You got to really be playing a part in a lot of your business. You can't really just have people re- represent your business for you because that's how she gets lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? And obviously, you know, you got to invest in yourself because. If you go take an advance from somebody, you might not take that shit as serious as if you put your own dough behind it. Every time I put my own bread behind myself, I, I will, will not lose it. I cannot. It's my bread. Uh-huh. I ain't going to lose my bread. I, I'm not losing my bread. Shit. So put your own money up. I think the third thing is just just keep them producers. I treat producers like breeders. When it comes to that smoke, you need the best breeder in the game behind your brand, right? Breeding constantly. Same way with the production. You know what I mean? You got to have the best producers around you that know your style, your sound, and, and, and will outfit the body of work that you want to put out. And also give you that good game. Like, yo, you know this artist? He's popping right now. You should take a look at him. You should, you should holler at him. You know what I mean? So producers got the ear to the street. So that, that's three things I would give from a CEO, you know, owner of a label situation for sure. Yeah, for me, it's, it's uh, always been these few things, right? Consistency. You know what I mean? Um, to always show up, to always put in that work, you know, never um, letting something deter you or or uh, get in the way of your grind and shit like that. You, you know, you do what you do and if you want to do it well and you want to be one of the best, if not the best at what you do, it's about consistency. You have to do that shit all the time and that's if you're you're an artist being a writer, you're being a producer, being an entertainer, whatever it is, or if you're a cultivator, you have to do that shit all the time. It's like um, they, like they say, um, <clears throat> to be great at something, you have to put 10,000 hours behind it. That's consistency, you know what I'm saying? And that we treat, we, I put that shit into effect into the music, and into the cannabis industry, you know, consistency, you know, we're, we're one of the brands, you know, cause we're constantly around, we're in your, in your face, face with it. We're talking about our shit. 
and people are talking about our shit and you know they're passing that brand brand around and that you know we've been consistently doing that for over 10 years with with our dr green thumb brand and we've developed our brand through that consistency after consistency is quality right what we put out as artists you know when we put out a song that shit's forever we don't want to put out a whack song because then we got to live with that shit people want to especially in this day and age they want to remind you when you put out some bullshit so it's and and even before this time you just know that recording something and putting it out it's going to be out there forever it's something you cannot take back so you want to have quality every time you putting some shit out there in the world you know what i mean whether it's a song or a strain or a product so you know we always make sure that we fucking with the quality of the shit quality control quality check quality matters you know what i'm saying can't be putting out boof music can't be putting out no boof strains or none of that shit <laughs> and boof, um, boof is not allowed that boof way that's that real shit that's that <laughs> body you talk you know what I'm and 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 third is you got to have passion for what you do the love you know if it's if it's just about the money you know you're gonna find yourself going through emotion going through the motions to get it and you know when people feel that vibe that you ain't really 100 percent about the shit you do and they ain't gonna feel it either that's like if you're up there performing a song and you ain't really feeling it and you walking around motherfuckers in the in the crowd get the vibe of that shit and they're like you know what i ain't feeling this song he ain't feeling it why should i feel it right so it's it's you got to have love for what you do so when you up there playing your music if you love that shit you'll move in a way that people know you're having a good time doing the shit you do you know what i'm saying so we all love the the cannabis industry and we love the music because we're artists so for me it's it's those three things you know consistency and last one was the gem love. brother love last one was the gem you gotta love what you do man if you don't love what you do then People are going to feel it. You're going to feel it. And you will be questioning why you waste your time. You can't get time back. Man. That's one thing you can't get back. What about you, boss? One of my first ones is something I just want to touch on. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm zoning so good. I'm smoking so good right now. But you, you mentioned, you know, being 100. And that's just something I want to touch on. Everybody, um, when you meet a motherfucker, you 100. Until you do some whole shit. That's when your 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 vibe begin to decrease. And for motherfuckers who are watching this, I want you to know once your your shit decrease, it can never come back. It don't matter what it do. You know what I'm saying? If you do something with your homies and y'all go do something and you get jammed up and <laughs> tell on little homie, um, it don't matter. If you come home and whack two niggas, you still, you know, fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta keep it 100. And that 100 leads over to you being able to network. Networking, to me, is most definitely one of the, the largest keys to really getting paper. You know, me coming from the South, me being in Miami, where it was only really one, two, maybe two independent record labels. I was talking about getting money when everybody else was talking about twerking, fucking hoes and all that. I ain't care about no hoes. I wanted big houses and tractors and cars in the best smoke, you know what I'm saying, coming from California. And you know, motherfuckers really ain't see that vision a lot. So I had to really learn how to network with different motherfuckers from everywhere. So as young artists, as entrepreneurs, as cultivators, you gotta learn to network, you know what I mean? And you know, that once again, fall back on building your brand. And you know, I look at my brand as an empire and I suggest everybody else do too, regardless of what it's worth, it's an empire. You know what I mean? Um, you putting in that time. He mentioned 10,000 hours. That was my first time hearing that, but that shit, it touched me. Cause you most definitely gotta spend time to get money. That shit ain't gonna happen overnight. You know what I mean? So just for motherfuckers watching that, and um, you know, just smoke the best, man. It's gonna keep your mind right. <laughs> That's a good number three. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? For motherfuckers don't know, it, keep your, it helps your appetite. You know what I'm saying? I'm a motherfucker that, you know, I began having seizures because I couldn't sleep. So I had to smoke the best. And I, you know, I get a few hours in now. So 
When you work like this, though, it's hard to sleep because your mind's just running, bro. I lay down at night, and my girl asks me, like, what up with you? I'm sitting there. I'm thinking of every conversation, every play I'm trying to run, right? And as soon as I open my eyes, I don't care if I wake up at 3, 4, or 5. As soon as they open, it's a wrap. Ain't no going back to bed. You I'm not going back to bed. I'm up. I'm figuring out what the play is. So, you know, when you, when you hustle, that mind runs, man. It's crazy. That weed will definitely help mellow a little bit. Yeah. I agree, man. And I think it's a couple things, you know what I mean? It's the hustle because, you know, constantly trying to figure out ways to get it, you know, bigger, better and all that. But even as a musician, as an artist and shit, you know, ideas always popping through the head. Oh, I, I hear this song or I hear this concept or this style and shit like that. And I think a lot of us go through that shit where we, you know, we don't go to sleep early. I had to train myself to like knock out early because I'd be going to sleep at like three, four in the mor morning, even when I didn't have to, when we didn't have sessions that late. And it's because my mind was constantly racing, but you know, you could, you could smoke some, some, some real good indicas or, or hit some concentrates and pop, be the fuck out. Uh, I'm going to hit that concentrate and have a fucking panic attack, bro. Bottom line, that shit, <laughs> that shit hits different, man. I, I don't know what happened to me. I used to be able to handle it. Now I hit that shit. Whoo, boy. Oh, man. I'm out the window with it, looking out the window like, man, what's popping outside, man? What's in it? No, that shit I'll fuck hey, if, if, it's, if, if I can't sleep late like that, if I get one of those nights, man, I'll fuck around and I'll, I'll hit that dab. I'll go get... That Grenco Rome shit, that uh, G Pen Rome deal, yeah, new shit they got. That shit works really well. If you got some good concentrates, I'll rock that shit right there, you know, and fire it up. That shit have me in the right. Well, you know I saying? know we got some, uh, we got some pink rose uh, sauce pens in the works. Some of the real pens. When you hit the pen and you just taste that that real turp, taste like you hitting straight off the plant, right off the bud, like like you just lit a fresh one. So. I know the, when those come in, you go out to love those. those oh, yeah. Out there, out that way too. You ain't gotta be riding crazy, smelling crazy. You got that vape with you. You about to be blowing big pink rose sauce out there. Man, it's about to be big. Hey, so, hey when, when all this shit is over, when, when it all dies down and we're able to, you know, go to and from freely and, and, and Rick comes down, the three of us gotta, you know, take a roll in the, in the smoke box, man. Candy paint. Let's go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, I love it, man. I can't wait till we pull them old school classics out and just smoke good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, you got a crazy it's fucking rotation. collection. You got a crazy collection, dog. I seen them toys, man. Shit. And man. all and all they for, all they really for is just to entertain me while I'm smoking. While I'm just sitting there smoking. I pull them out, get them washed, just to smoke and watch them. <laughs> For sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Hey, hey which, one's, which one's your favorite one? Oh, man, you know that Bell F57 mean a lot, that 59 mm -hmm. Impala, you know what I'm saying? The 55 and the 56 Bell S, you know? Hey, let, let me ask you this. Do you, do you, do you name them? Do you I got name them. Cars? I name them all. <laughs> That's what's up. That's how you, <laughs> you got to do it. I name them all. I got to. I had a 57... I had a 57 hard top Bel Air when uh, I was in this club called Lifestyle, right? It's a, it's a you know, legendary club here, here in Los Angeles. And uh, I, you know, was in the club with that car and that car, the name of that car was Nice Dreams, uh, named after Cheech and Chong's movie and shit. It was a, it was a nice 57, you would've liked that one, man. That, that one was fucking banging. I love them Bel Airs. It's I in Japan them. now. I sold it. To, I sold it to some cat in Japan, and he like took it to another level. Them cats do it big out there with the low. A lot of boys go hard with the whips. They go hard with them low riders too. Yeah, especially with the low riders. It's crazy. I mean, they do import, you know, style with the crazy, you know, fast and furious shit. But like their low rider culture is crazy. It is it's mad advanced. It is. I yeah. fuck. I fuck with them. Yeah, I, I definitely fuck with them, man. Hey, you, got the, you, got, you got the records on deck? You got, you got the candy on deck? I do got it on deck right here. Hold up, what's that? I want to hear it while I open this bag and breathe this fresh, beautiful aroma of this pound cake, the fresh batch. 
I'm gonna rock it right here. You got it? You ready? Yeah, hell yeah. All right, hold on. Let me adjust. Here we go. Oh, I gotta get it over here. One sec, one sec. I'm grossly misprepared. Oh, this shit right here, boy. Oh, yeah, that's that shit right there. Bye -bye. All right, here we go. Boom. All right, since you got the candy. Savage on the beat. It makes me want to get on a plane with about 300. Go see my partners down south real quick and bust an old school burner play. That's how you know that shit's jamming. Makes me want to go bust a move real quick, man. Some dirty 20s, man. Sheesh. Everything can. <laughs> That's just hard, bro. That's just hard right there. Shout out to Sap, man. I just found Sap. I never used Sap before. That boy got fire. I mean, he, miss, miss beats, man. he got fire, brother. I go live. Uh, I was impressed when I opened up that folder. 
I don't know how I got a folder from him. He hit me or sent it somehow, but that shit was fire. I got these cats. I don't know if you heard of a brick. They're out of Miami. They call um, Architrack. Architracks or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they got some fire tracks too. Yeah, man. they dope. They dope. I got to look at them. Yeah, man. I got to reach out to them cats. They, they, they gave me some heat a while back when I was doing... Um, Shit, I, I was doing some record and shit, and they gave me some heat on it. That shit was tight. I think I'm on, on my prescription album. I think on, on that one, they gave me something for that. My boy um, Cosmo got some shit for us too, Rose. That boy got some shit for us. He been plotting on that. He been the biggest advocate for some burning Rose shit, so he got a nice folder for you too. I'm gonna send it over to you. Fire, fire, fire. I'm finna get in the lab now. I'm finna crank that motherfucker up and just... <laughs> Cut that shit up and just let the thick smoke go out. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, oh. man. He hey, we- told me a while ago about your style. He said, you listen to the beat. You just listen. Sit there and listen. Just listen, listen, listen. He told me about this back in the day. He said, man, you just listen to that beat. Let it rock. Then it's, it's just over. It's a wrap. I look at it. I kind of look at it just like smoking a blunt. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I sit in a room a small room, a record room, and I smoke, and that smoke fill the room up. I, I look at the music the same way. I like to let the music play till I know that shit has filled the room. And when I walk into that motherfucker, it's everywhere. It's so thick. Man, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that's the way it's got to be, though, man. You don't catch that vibe. For real. I catch a vibe. It's all about a vibe. For real, right here. Right. Yeah. I'm on my reds today too, man. I'm on my reds today too, big bro. You know what I mean? I'm on these hemp's today. Slap them with the black and gold, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You do it. Man, bro, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you hitting us back because when it failed, I wanted to chop game with you by my yard. I know he was out moving. So when you hit me back about jumping back in, I was like, hell yeah. This, this, this is what we need to give the world one time. Let them know we really rock with each other and we got some dope shit in the works. And you but, know, shit. But that's the only way we make it to the top, brother, is when we do have those disconnections. We make sure the first chance we get back to that main line, we reconnect. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And and and, and people are gonna fuck with this right here. You know what I'm saying? Cause this this was definitely like a real conversation. Uh, with like on some family shit, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we definitely appreciate you, G, for sure, man, 100%. Man, that's for life, man. It's the cookie mob. And, 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 and for real, the three of us got to do some shit. Like, I think we'll kill it. I'm too all in. It's I'm too all in. in. Rose all in. It's... Well, yeah. You know, man, I need to go get this valley ASAP, man. I'm about to have to go hit the store. That glass looking too good right now, brother. I need hey, that, man. No, hey, Bird. Man, good. Hey, Bird, you already know you got to find, you know, the 12 beats for the three of us now. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Man. A&R extraordinaire. Man, you Believe know, that. this guy, too, though, he's he's the king of finding the, the dope beats. So oh, gonna, I know. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick, like, five, four or five and let him pick the rest because I know whatever he brings is going to be crazy. I'm just going to go with whatever y'all bring. Let's go. And for all those watching out there right now, just we said it here first. Just give me about six to nine months and you're going to see that pink pound cake. Yeah, Ooh. pink pound cake. I can't wait. I can't wait that long, man. Rose need that, man. That sounds delicious. That sounds delicious to spot. No, nah, it do. It do. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to roll that up, pink. Man. Man, man, you know, brothers, I'm going to go make the wife some dinner because I've been down here hiding all day, getting loaded. She she probably wants to kill me, so I'm going to get up there. Happy wife, happy life, especially on quarantine, man. You know, got to keep the main good, thing. Man. I'll tell y'all niggas, man. Keep hustling. Everybody tuned in, nigga. Keep doing your thing. Like too big, bro. Right on, B. Right on. on. Hey, hey, and, and, and let's just definitely do what uh, my man was talking about and, and do this more often. You know what I'm saying? Like, get it, people through this this type of shit right here. This, this is a players club right here, man. This this uh you've been summoned to the the smoke. We're gonna think of a dope ass name, but we're gonna bring currency up next because that's my dog and he needs to do some shit like this with us. You know been summoned. <laughs> Better believe it. Right All on. Right. Y'all have a good night, man. Love. All right, geez.
Love. Peace. They thought the burner was burnt, but your boy you on point and alert. Yeah, your bitch look cute, but I had a first. I seen him crying online, dying of thirst. Yeah, your shot been slow. I'm sure that it hurt. B, what's some numbers down at Silmar?